Welcome, everyone. I'm Kerry Schwabel. Uh, I'll be your host for today. Uh, I'm excited to have you all join us for this topic. Um, a little bit about myself. I am uh, a digital media operations specialist at, at Cooper Smith, um, and I actually help produce one of the podcasts that we're going to be talking about today. So without further ado, joining us today are two very, very special people, Chris Peterson and Brad Rieger. Welcome. Good to be here. Thanks. We are thrilled to have both of you. Um, a little bit about each of our guests. Chris is the host of the podcast called Just a Moment, centered around the concept that one-on-one -on -one interviews, Just a Moment, relates true stories about individuals whose life-changing experiences alter their lives in unexpected ways. Chris has a substantial number of awards, both professionally and in the community. She was the face of WTOL News for 20 years, and she accumulated six Emmy Awards, four Edward R. Murrow Awards for, for her storytelling, as well as inducted into the Associated Press Broadcasters Hall of Fame in 2014. In the community, she serves on the board of Lords University and the Toledo Police Foundation, She's the president of the Press Club of Toledo and has been an honorary chair of the Northwest Ohio Race for the Cure, which is coming up soon. Our second guest, Brad Rieger, is the host of In the Arena, Conversations of a Lifetime, which shines a light on the life-shaping experiences and perspectives of leaders who have navigated adversity and moved their organizations and themselves forward. Brad is the Chief Executive Officer of Cooper Smith, a full-service marketing and advertising agency that specializes in marketing, market, media strategy planning, media buying, branding, and creative. Pre previously to Cooper Smith, Brad enjoyed a meaningful 31-year career in year career in education. The last education position held was Superintendent of Sylvania Schools from 2003 to 2015. We are thrilled to have both of you join us. Um, hey, hey, Carrie, I know, you know, Chris had six Emmys and all those other things, but I, I won a uh, punt, pass, and kick when I was 10 years old. <laughs> so That needs uh, to be in your bio. <laughs> please update the bio to reflect I'll, that. I'll be, I'll so be sure to be do on, that. Um, it's not quite the six Emmys, but, you know, it looks like an Emmy. The punt, pass, and kick trophy does. Yeah. Frequently and frequently wins the rock and roll trivia um, contests yeah. at local bars and grills. So correct, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to we'll have to get a gold football for your office, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we get started, make sure you all are muted. Um, any questions, please hold until the end. Feel free to add them to the chat, and we will have a Q and A at the end. So. <clears throat> With the purpose of today's Lunch and Learn, um, I think it's clearly evident that, you know, podcasts are a growing platform. And um, based on a recent Nielsen report, you know, podcasts have grown 40% in the past three years. I think that, you know, a lot of that has to do with the pandemic days. But um, nevertheless, um, you know, maybe you're looking to start a podcast. Maybe you already have started a podcast and hit a wall. Um, hopefully, if you're in one of those scenarios where um, well, it, we are able to help you guide through that with what you learned today. So let's start it off with the concept, ground zero for a podcast. And Chris, I'm going to start with you. What made you want to do a podcast? Kind of describe the thought process and, you know, what it took in developing that theme and brand that you have. Uh, so I think after working in television news so long, I just uh, really still enjoy telling stories and I enjoy talking to people and getting to know people. And I'm also, um, my master's degree is in organizational leadership. I'm very um, fascinated and interested in resilience and purpose for people and what drives them, what makes them tick and how people navigate through especially difficult times, but sometimes positive events take some navigating as well. Um, and so I, 
you know, think about all of us and these big moments that we have in our lives where everything changes and how we navigate through those moments to come out on the other side. And wouldn't it be great if we could share those lessons that people learn along the way to uh, help others who might be in the middle of it or just at the beginning of that navigation journey. And so that's where my concept came up. Um, just a moment is kind of a play on, it was just a moment in their lives. Um, and there's a whole big scope before and after that happened. Um, and then also, if you will give me just a moment um, to tell my story or to listen to these people's stories, um, I'll share with you some inspiration. So that's basically what my concept was. Awesome. And Brad, what, what about your concept? You know, let me just piggyback on what Chris said. Chris's first episode, and I forget the gentleman's name, Chris, you know, he survived uh, an airplane crash. And just framing that, uh, that whole story was just an incredible uh, listen. But some of the same things that Chris talked about, just, uh, you know, I have, I'm just, always, I'm, I'm fascinated with people's kind of journey and their life stories. And, and um, I'm trying to figure out life along the way. And a lot of times when you talk to people, you can connect and things resonate and gives you a, a broader perspective on, on life. Um, and, you know, I'm the type of guy that if I'm at, invited to a party, a house party, I'm more apt to go to the kitchen and kind of pigeonhole one or two people versus bopping around to the other 25 or 30. <laughs> I'd rather, I mean, I'll do that, but I'm, I'm more apt to just connect with one or two people and talk about their lives and things we share in common and talk to a, a deeper level. That might make me not a great party guest. You know, sometimes my wife will say, hey, can you move around a little bit? And uh, uh, and I do that, but I, I really enjoy those one-on-one -on -one conversations with people and just learning uh, about their path. The other thing, even as a kid, I remember really enjoying uh, TV, uh, the interview format, like TV, like Johnny Carson and Dick Cavett, Tom yeah. Snyder, um, even Ted Koppel, David Letterman. Um, Barbara Walters uh, dealt with some really, was one of the first to kind of deal with the really human side of things. I remember even it really enjoying uh, those conversations and even talk show um, format. So even as a young kid, I really enjoyed that. And um, I've been fortunate enough to be in leadership positions. And um, I think a leader's journey is even, it has a whole nother dimension just, than just a, uh, are the conversations I would have in a kitchen with someone about their about their general leaders have a different set of experiences that not everyone has, and because I was in leadership positions throughout my life, I was always looking for insights or help to how I could do a better job serving others and connecting with people, and uh, so the idea for in the arena was to put a spotlight on leaders. Um, that are doing their very best to do good things for their companies and their communities and for individuals and it to be a deeper conversation really focusing on uh, you know lessons learned and uh, points of inspiration and defining moments in your life those are bigger those are kind of some deep questions and um, but I find those fascinating and they're very helpful for me to be the best person I can be when I have those type of conversations. And I think they're, they're beneficial to uh, when other, other people hear people in leadership positions talk about, talk about that. When I talk about leadership too, it's a broader, it's not just someone who's leading a Fortune 500 company. It could be someone in a field that's just achieved something significantly or someone who's just very talented in a certain area or as a trailblazer in a certain area. Um, so it's kind of a broad view of, of, of leadership. And I think I might've told Chris this when we, when, cause Chris was a, a great interview. And so my metrics carry and everyone here is that I don't have the traditional downloads and 
like how many people, but after an interview, after recording, if I hit the record button off and I, the guests and I look at each other and say, man, that was really meaningful and fun. Um, the second metric is if the guest, when they listen to it, if they say, yeah, that, that time together, that episode of the podcast reflects who I am as a, as a human being, as a leader, that's a second metric that I'm shooting for. And then the third one is if people who are listening, if they find something that's interesting, they find it interesting, if they find something that is relatable and resonates with them, and then if it broadens their perspective on life and gives them some ideas on leadership, then I would consider that uh, a success. So that's kind of my, my metrics. Awesome, both of those are great themes um, and concepts for moving forward. So you have a concept now, now you have to build this kind of segment of time where, you, where you're interviewing people. Um, how, how did that start to look? How did your episode flow? What, what were some of the consistent components that you, you tried to implement into your podcast? Go, Chris, you. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll take this one first. So I really look at, um, I just really enjoy letting the story unfold. I try not to plan too much. Um, for instance, with the plane crash with Jerry, I knew that he had been in this plane crash. It was one of the most significant stories at the beginning of my career when that plane crashed because we knew it was going to crash. So there were cameras waiting to watch it when it landed. They were hoping that it would land and it did not land it crash landed. Um, but with 300 people on board, 100 only didn't make it. Two thirds of the people survived it. And that's incredible to me. And Jerry was one of those. One of the things that he says in that episode is um, everybody has a plane crash in their life, right? Everybody has something that they have gone through like that, that was impactful and meaningful to them. And so I knew that he had been through that, but much of the information that, that came out in that podcast just came organically and naturally. I don't, I don't spend time planning how the conversation will go. I really just let it happen and hear the story and let them tell their stories and try to kind of guide them and ask questions that you might be thinking if you heard them say something and just let it unfold. I've been as surprised by some of the things that people have said in my conversations, you know, cause I didn't really know the full story and I like being kind of surprised and you know, that surprise and delight, you know, that you find when you talk to somebody like that. So I don't really um, plan mine out. I just really like to take uh, someone that I know has been through something and then start and guide. Now I do edit my podcast. Um, Brad is pretty great about leaving his all intact. I have had conversations that have lasted an hour and 45 minutes and I'm just not going to put an hour and 45 minute podcast out there. Um, I don't think my blueberry will support it. So I um, uh, really will, you know, kind of take and edit afterward um, just to take out a lot of dead air or maybe there was a little segment of something that wasn't as impactful as some of the other things that were said there. And then I add uh, an intro and an outro to my podcasts, um, kind of why I wanted to, you know, setting up the guest at the beginning and why I wanted to talk with them. And then at the end, the lessons and um, just nuggets of wisdom that come out for me. At the end, I like to just give, you know, here's what I really got out of this conversation for me. And then maybe give resources, my most recent, um, podcast is about a, a military veteran who twice tried to kill herself after a traumatic injury that she suffered um, and then went on to um, compete for gold and silver medals in the Invictus Games. So, um, you know, that story was um, very meaningful, but also there are a lot of people that are going to benefit from listening to her, the fact that she is still here. And so I wanna give resources at the end, um, the Veterans Crisis Hotline, 
um, you know, some other places that people can turn for help if they are going through something similar. So that's something that's important to me also as I'm kind of navigating through and putting things together. I think Chris, you're, the way you, you do a really good job at the intro, but you're closing kind of those summative points, that makes it a, I don't know, like a master class. It, it, adds, it adds a nice dynamic. I haven't seen that on too many podcasts where you summarize it. And that's, I would think, I think that your years in journalism, that the, you just pull that off really naturally. And I think that's a really effective, your lead in is, and your close, the closing especially, because you tie it, all the big points and give us something additional to think about. Well, let me say I don't do that in the moment like you do, Brad. <laughs> like you, you are like, you know, um, beginning to end. And I will do my interview. I'll edit that. And then I'll do the intro, record the intro and record the outro um, after I re-listen to the conversation yep. and really think about the things that were meaningful to me from that conversation. So it, it, it I mean, I am taking a little more time to kind of think about what was really inspirational in there. It's not really done in the moment, but it is, you know, I think kind of the universal themes and truths that come out of these stories that people and these traumas that people have lived through. Yeah. I just think there's a really good polished effect. And Thank you. because you're dealing with really emotional things, it's probably, it's good that you take that time and say, well, how am I going to frame the ending? So it's interesting, Chris, I, I think the contrast between you and I is that First of all, when I when I when I came up with in the arena, you know the, the the title has to do with the Teddy Roosevelt quote, and basically it was um, a rebuke to critics to leaders that really it's the person in the arena who's trying. Um, that's the person that should get the credit, not the people on the sidelines throwing bricks at at the at the leaders. So, but I also wrote down about I just jotted down a hundred people I'd like to have a conversation with. And most of those people I know. And, um, but if I, what to really force myself, I write down, okay, if I'm gonna talk to Chris Peterson, or if I'm gonna talk to Mike Bell, if I'm gonna talk to Vicki Hurst, what am I gonna, what's really of interest to me? What am I gonna say? So I literally write down, I brainstorm a, a set of questions and I look at them, I go, okay, I think I, based on this, I think it can be a really meaningful and, and fun conversation. And um, because it is a, the tagline for In the Arena is conversations of a lifetime. So I'm kind of foreshadowing that this is gonna be a different conversation. It's gonna be a deeper um, dive into this, the guest's uh, personal uh, journey. And because it's a deeper dive, there'll be, a lot of times I'll send an email to the prospective guest after talking to them and telling them about the, the podcast and I'll send them an official invite with some of the, just some of the questions I'm thinking about so they have an idea. I don't wanna catch off guard with a conversation of a lifetime and think we're gonna keep it at a superficial level. And I usually say, hey, I'm not, we're not going to follow this as a script or anything, but these are some of the things that I wrote down on a bar napkin that I think are really, I want to, I want to ask you about. If it's just you and me sitting across the table with a glass of beer or a cup of coffee, these are the things I'd like to know about you. And we're just going to let other people listen in. But I do have a structured set of questions. And a lot of times I'm going from uh, childhood all the way to current. And so um, that's kind of the formula. I'm not sure, I'm mixing it up a little bit, like sometimes starting with something current events, but then getting back into, well, Chris, tell me what type of, what type of kid were you growing up? Were you always this gregarious? Were you always this focused? And then Chris talked about her background and growing it up. And based on some of the stories, it makes perfect sense for the type of, professional and leader that she is now. And I find those stories um, back in our childhood and high school and college, those formative experiences are really important to who we are 
later in life. And so I think there's some instructive aspects that there's just some funny, quirky things too that people uh, can share. But, you know, you talk about time, Chris, uh, I've done 18 now interviews, episodes. The shortest has been 42 minutes. The longest has been two hours. And that was Mike Bell. And we were going to a, a, a stop point with Mike and then he brought up his time that he spent with President Obama when he came to Toledo. And the story he shared about him riding the beast with Obama to a, a, a talk in downtown Toledo was priceless. I was about ready to wrap up. And then Mike said, hey, can I tell you this story about me riding in the limo with the President Obama? I go, yeah, we got time. And he just <laughs> off. But I, I do, I think the best time probably is between 45 minutes to an hour. It seems like that's a real concise time. And I know most people have different ways of doing podcasts. And Carrie and I have talked about maybe splitting up some of the longer ones, but I just, we've just let it ride and uh, people can uh, tune in or tune out. Uh, but also, you know, Chris, you do a lot of the intro stuff and uh, Carrie helps me with that. You know, there's a taped voiceover as far as what in the arena is so i don't have to explain that live during the interview and then also um there's some music that comes in at the end that um carrie um carrie puts in but to your point chris i think for me the challenge is listening really intently to what the guest is saying and looking for avenues that can shine a light on important aspects of that leader not just my questions that I that I prepared for and I'm ready to go. And so I'm starting to get better at that, more focused on what you said, Chris, paying attention to where the conversation is going or where the conversation could go and then asking the appropriate uh, follow-up questions. Yeah, and you're great at that because you're a lover of people, Brad. So you truly are interested in people. And so your interest and your curiosity comes out when you're talking with people there, um, you know, and listening to what they say, you're, you know, you might skip a couple of questions that you've yeah. prepared for, but then just kind of go down another road, which is awesome. I think it's a great idea because I think it's hard for people to talk about themselves in a certain yeah. way. It's much easier to talk about other things yes. than yourself. And so to give people an outline like you do to just say, here are some of the things I'm thinking, it makes you think because yeah. otherwise you might not, you know, he might not have thought of that story of Obama to tell you or share with you, right? I mean, it, it really helps you to think about um, what was formative about my leadership and, and when did I, do I consider myself a leader? And, you know, all of these things that you maybe don't really reflect on enough. So I think, um, you do people a great service by giving that kind of outline. And I certainly appreciated you asking me about the music so I could give that some thought because, there are just so many songs out there that you could choose from. And it's the element that I love about your podcast. I love all of it, but I just think asking people to tell their story in music um, is really a great addition and goes right along with the, you know, it's kind of another play on in the arena there too, right. you know, with all of the groups and bands and artists that we love. And I, I think that's a wonderful component, Brad. Well, thank you. I think music, as we all, many of us here gathered, is a universal language and it connects us to times and people and places in our lives. And there's an emotional aspect to music. And so part of the podcast there's an emotional aspect that we're trying to touch in yours chris and in mine and i typically end uh, the, the conversation with it but i ask real specific things and these questions i've been asking for 40 years of my life so what I, I i've done this as a teacher as a principal as a superintendent and in the private sector um also now in a podcast and it's a variation of the same thing but everyone needs some time to think about it. Cause if I spring these on them, it's going to be like, what I, there's so yeah, much. Yeah. So typically I ask people what song reminds you of high school, 
What artist or album have you played the most in your life? What song fires you up? What song chills you out? Describe a memorable concert experience. And the best, the most important one is, what would you be your walk-up song? Now, there's many layers to that, right? Yeah. Walk-up song. You can have just a fun one. You can have something meaningful. And I've had all over the place. And Chris, yours is uh, Let's Get This Party Started <laughs> by Pink. And you could have 10 more. But on that day I interviewed you, that was your walk-up song. That was it. And I think that there's a great connection to music. And it also lightens it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. and just shows have some fun and some because most of the time we're dealing with some we're talking about heavier issues so the music is a great way to kind of kind of tie it up so brad what's what's your walk-up song you know i would say you see pearl jam over my right shoulder i would say alive by pearl jam live by pearl jam i can tell you what part Good of the one. song that would be the best there is a segue about three-fourths of the way through that is hypnotically good <laughs> awesome <clears throat> so the structure basically for you know brad's is more chronologically and chris yours is more kind of just let the interview go and let it flow and then more polished on the end and brad kind of touched on how he gets the guests and how he generates that content uh, Chris, how do you how do you approach these people who who have had these life changing stories? How do you how do you go about that? I um, also like Brad when I first started, and let me just also go back and say I thought about this podcast for two years before a, an episode ever hit the airwaves, right? Before an episode was ever dropped, and Brad started his and I was like, dang it, Brad started a podcast. <laughs> I'm like, if he's going to do it, I've got to get mine Reader out. could do it. Right? Anyone could do it. I got to get it. Oh, no, but he inspired me because I thought, you know, his is really great. And I knew I had these people, these stories. I just know, you know, from my years of life, basically, you know, I, we all have friends and, and acquaintances and people we know who have gone through um, things. And that was really my, um, you know, I'm just looking for people who have gone through something and they've been able to navigate through that positively and, you know, share, are willing to share the lessons that they've learned on the, you know, as they've come through the other side. It's hard. Anybody that gets a cancer diagnosis, it's going to be different for every person. You know, the lessons are going to be different. Your story is going to be a little different, but the inspiration and the resilience and the purpose that you find moving through that moment, I think is really the common theme that you see. So, you know, I knew, I mean, I, like Brad made my list right away. I said, you know, here are a bunch of the people that I'd really like to talk to when I start. And I haven't had anybody, well, yes, I have had one person turn me down because they thought it was just going to be too difficult for them to talk about it. Um, and I respect that. And I, I um, appreciate the people who are willing to relive those moments because it's painful a lot of times, you know, I have a couple of things that have been positive for people, but a lot of it is, you know, moments of trauma or moments of disappointment or, you know, of, of physical trauma, car accident, um, a car crash, you know, those types of things. Um, a, a woman who had a cancer diagnosis and had her arm amputated and she's a young mom of four and how do you move through that, right? Um, so all these things that are, traumatic for them to relive. And I just really appreciate them being willing to tell their story. And it is, people want to tell it. They want to share. They want to help other people because they know that they were either, you know, two things. They relied on others as they went through it. And then also, um, you know, they want some good to come out of this for other people at the end what they've gone through. So it, it, there's a lot of, and people are so generous with their experience is what I found. And, and I'm so grateful because I'm inspired by every one of those conversations. And Chris, you probably do this, but 
I'll, I'll send in my email a link to the In the Arena website and say, hey, just give a listen. Yeah. See if you feel comfortable with this format. Yeah. And I, that's probably what you do also. Yeah. I will say, please, you know, check it out. And like I said, most people are people that I already have some established relationship with. And so I, you know, feel very comfortable. And I think they know that I have their best interest at heart and that I care about them and I'm not going to do anything to exploit anything that they've gone through. And, you know, hopefully, I mean, that's part of being the interviewer, right, is building that trust. And, and um, I appreciate people trusting me with their stories as well. And I know you do too, Brad. And I don't chase people either. Use, I do a soft invite, then do a formal invite, but I don't, if they, if they don't respond, I, that's, that's fine. But even though I really want them on, I think they'd yeah. be great. And maybe at some point they'll they'll be ready. But no chasing of the guests. Yeah. No hounding. Awesome. So I want to take a step back from the content piece of it and kind of get back into the operations piece of it. Um, from you know, working with Brad and listening to you know his insights on. Um, your podcast, Chris, it, it seems like you kind of both hit a wall when you were, when you were going to do this. Um, kind of talk about what you learned from the, from the operations point of it. Let me, Chris, can I, let me go first because yeah. this was my humbling moment. So I'm a pretty bright guy, right? So I have this great concept, I, just like you, Chris, months formulating a concept in the arena and um, actually, Mandy, who's on today, Mandy Matthews, she used to be with us in a creative department. I actually asked her to come up with a graphic to represent it. And so I had this great concept. Mandy put together the graphic that is, is associated with the podcast. And now I, I pivot. I think I'm ready to do the technical stuff. So I do... Internet's great for all this stuff. And I quickly find out that it's more, a lot more involved. And what the first thing I did was music. I got the graphic that Mandy did. I got this great concept. So I had this idea. I was going to use Pearl Jam music, U2, Dave Matthews. Why well, quickly, my na na naiveness is you can't do that. You can't just use people's music on your, on your podcast. They shut you down. The FCC shuts you down. So that was my first like, oh, this might be more complicated. And I quickly just ran. I, did, I hit the wall, like Carrie said. I couldn't figure out how to record in a quality way. And I wanted it to be good. Obviously, I'm associated with a marketing and advertising firm. So it can't be slapdash, right? And so mm -hmm. I... I didn't have the techno technological with itness to figure that out. And I, I basically was having the conversation with Carrie and others. I said, I need help. Does anyone have this? And it's, a, it's not a, it's an acquired skill podcasting. And uh, Carrie said, well, I have video and audio editing. I can learn. I, I'll go see. And he took it from there. So literally without uh, Carrie stepping in, my great idea is still on the, the kitchen table. And even though I had a great graphic from Mandy and I was going nowhere. So that's where I hit the wall. So I'm a very appreciative of the Cooper Smith team, Carrie, Mandy, when she was here, Jeremy Thomas uh, does the individual graphics for each of the guests. I mean, I have a team that helps me. So I'm just really fortunate. And they're my colleagues. So I'm, I'm indebt indebted to each one of them. Chris, do you have a team? You need to get yourself a team, Chris. I, I don't have Carrie, but I have a daughter named Riley, and she is obligated by blood to help me <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> edit my podcast. <laughs> so I usually edit the conversation myself. Um, I just use GarageBand, and I basically have kind of felt this as I've gone. Riley has been a huge help because, you know, the young people know all this technology. I bought a really nice microphone. 
I plug it into my computer. I use um, GarageBand to record my uh, uh, interviews with people. And then I go through in GarageBand and just edit them myself. I will send that file uh, to Riley. She already has the open. I will send her, I'll do my voice track for the intro and outro. I'll send that to her. And then she mixes the music up and under um, at the beginning and the end for me and puts everything together. And um, I appreciate that. I could do it, but it takes her about 20 to 30 minutes to do it. And it takes me a lot longer than that when I'm working on it. So um, I appreciate her willingness to help. And then, um, you know, uh, George Brimer and Amy over at the Creative Block, um, they do my website, my professional website, which I have added my podcast onto. And it is hooked up, um, it's through WordPress and it directly plugs into Blueberry, which is my podcasting platform. And Blueberry pushes it out to all the platforms for me. So I don't have to worry about, you know, making sure Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and um, all the rest, Spotify, all have my thing. It just automatically happens once we've gotten it all set up. So it's really, you know, all those components, I think, are what seem overwhelming at the beginning. You want it to be perfect. And I think, you know, working in broadcasting for nearly 30 years, I thought this better be really good. And I had all these grand ideas about doing this, like some Malcolm Gladwell kind of podcast where I would tell a little of the story and then let it, you know, roll and then tell a little more and then let it roll. And I just don't have time for that. It's not my full-time job. It's just a hobby. So um, I just came up with a different format and tried not to make it so overwhelming on myself. Um, once I had, uh, your media people helped me to do my, um, Spencer over there, helped me do my, uh, open for my broadcast. And I just basically took some sound bites of interviews that I had already conducted and mixed them into my open. And, um, he did a great job with that. And once you have those components, you're ready to roll, but it did seem really overwhelming. So overwhelming at the beginning that I just didn't do it. You know, I, I had Jerry Schemmel, the plane crash survivor, I had his interview for more than a year before I ever ended up putting my podcast out. And, you know, just for being overwhelmed by all the things that needed to get done. You know, and I'm seeing, and Carrie, you probably have seen Chris, is I'm seeing more and more, um, software that's trying to simplify podcasting or just the audio space in general. And, but everyone, the creators of those are in their mid twenties. Yeah. And it's, they're this, it's they're digital natives and they're trying to create things so that someone my age can do, can join the conversation. And I'm really interested in hearing or seeing how that develops. And, um, but yeah, the, the technical part stopped me dead in my tracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And from a, from a production standpoint and role, I, I think the moral of the story is we're all kind of figuring it out. Because if <clears throat> when Brad came to me, it's like, hey, I want to make a podcast. Okay, well, you know, we can do this, this, and this, and that, that'll fit that need. But now we got to do this, and then we got to publish it. So, um, like Chris uses Blueberry, we use a, a product called Buzzsprout and it publishes, it gives you a landing page and then publishes to all the different directories, Apple, Apple Podcast, Google, Spotify, every, every single one. And you don't have to worry about that part of it. So, you know, it's, it, it's a struggle at the beginning, but figuring it out. Yeah, and just signing up for all that stuff, right? Like you have to go to each individual service and sign up and make sure that it's plugged into your platform. And that can seem also very daunting and overwhelming. And, you know, luckily I, I had a little help from George and Amy on that as well. Um, because all those little technical things are just really... <laughs> like obstacles that I was not able at all to overcome on my own. 
And so I was just so grateful that there were people out there that were able to kind of help me do that. And, you know, push me, George kept saying like, let's get it out, let's get it out, you know? And, and, um, you know, I, I appreciate other people who were willing to kind of step in like you Carrie, with Brad and, uh, just, you know, really say, okay, let's get this done. Like, don't just keep thinking about it. We should have Riley on here so she can give kind of the technical <laughs> behind the scenes. Of she is, you know, like like many of you, I'm sure she's just zip, 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 and it's done and it's out. And, you know, she knows what to do when I have a question. I call her in the middle of the night and she's got the answer. Chris, you're much more sophisticated and mature than I am. So you probably didn't do this. But after the first time my uh, first episode got populated to all those um like, like a Spotify, I took a screenshot and sent it to Shelby and Allison, our daughters, they're 24 and 27, and go, hey, guess what? Your dad is on Spotify. You know, <laughs> the, so they gave me a digital eye roll, like, hey, that's great, dad. So is like nine other, you know, eight, five million other billion people also, dad. <laughs> Thank, way to join us. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it is fun. <laughs> But um, going back to what Brad was saying is the technology that they're developing today is, uh, you know, it is really helping move that needle on, on this kind of issue that, that, we're, that we're talking about. And, you know, there's, there's all sorts of different ones. A lot of them are like the one that we use, which is Buzzsprout. Um, the Anchor's a good one that you can, you can record it on your phone and publish it and do everything from your phone. So you don't even need a microphone. Is it the best quality? No, but you know you can also record things on a microphone, transfer it to Anchor, and then publish it, which is also part of Spotify, I do believe. Another, another one that's sprouting up is, uh, is called Lava, L-A-V-A. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, a really impactful, um, in the audio space, but it's it's beyond podcasting, but it's just creating additional opportunities to for people to share their ideas via the audio space. There's a video component to that too, right? Brad, is there a video I, component to it? I don't know if it is or, yes, there is, there's a, yes. So, you know, you bring up video, Chris, I don't know if you wrestled with this, but, and Carrie and I, you talked about it when we talked about the formatting is that there are video podcasts, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we made the this. I made the decision just to keep it. There's something more intimate for me with the with the with the listening and the ears. And I think we get so much screen time now. I mean, I do I I do I do see the video podcasts and watch them. But there's something that I enjoy more about just the audio aspect. I also think that from a guest perspective, right, when people are really opening up and sharing things that are very important to them or very sensitive to them, that video component adds a barrier that some people just can't overcome. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it would be a lot harder to also edit if you were doing it. Um, sure, DIY. right. Yep. So I think that, you know, them knowing that you're just having a conversation and that it's just going into this microphone and they don't have to worry about what they look like. Um, if they're crying, is their mascara running down their face? You know, all of those types of things for me is why I decided that I was not going to do a video component to it because I just um, think it's, it's safer for people who are telling intimate things about themselves. Yep. Yeah. All right, so moving forward, what's what's next to your podcast? Chris, I'll, I'll let you go first. What's, what's next to your podcast? What do you see in the future? I, listen, I, I'm just so happy to have, you know, eight episodes out there, or however many I have out there right now. I'm not, I don't have as many as Brad. And just to know that I have kind of uh, overcome the major hurdles at the beginning, because now it's a much simpler process for me. So when I meet people or hear people's great stories, it's, it's much easier. I don't have any aspirations of, you know, selling this or, you know, getting sponsors. That's a whole other ball of wax. Um, people can do it. 
But for me, I think it would almost take the joy out of <laughs> telling the story. And if you have to put one out every week because somebody feels like they're paying you to do that, it would probably not be um, as enjoyable for me. So I just, um, I think, you know, keep finding good stories, keep putting them out there. I do think um, uh, there's a refinement that happens in the interviewing process and the storytelling process and the editing process as you're kind of whittling through people's stories as you go along. And so I'm, you know, hoping to get better and better at that um, and keep, you know, developing stories that are impactful for other people. But I don't, I mean, I don't have any really other grand plans for anything else besides what I'm really doing already. Okay. Carrie, Carrie, for me, it's trying to figure out a way to maybe promote it in a different way. And that's, a, I feel weird even saying that because it's, I really want the spotlight on the guests and not necessarily on me. That sounds, and so, and I'm in marketing and advertising, but I, I, I didn't, we haven't. So when we get done an episode, I put it out on my Twitter and LinkedIn accounts. Uh, Tim over here at Cooper, Tim McCarthy has created an in the arena um, channels and on Facebook and Instagram, which I'm not on. And so, the episodes get pushed out uh, that way, but beyond that, we don't. I don't really push it out. So part of that was I felt insecure start when I first started as a podcaster. I wanted to get my sea legs before I said, "Hey, look at me! Look at me at my podcast." And fortunately, I had wonderful guests that just carried it. I sensed that the key was getting a really engaging guest that was willing to talk about their story and their leadership struggles and, and, or just their leadership path. And if you do that, that's 90% of having a successful conversation. And then it's me just getting better at listening during the conversation and then hitting the right follow-up questions and flashing a, a, a spotlight on the guest. The other thing that I do that I found is that I'll, after uh, an interview, I'll take the link and send it to that person's inner circle. It's a way to kind of, whether it be a colleague or a family member saying, hey, this person, I think you're gonna really enjoy this. And uh, he or she was wonderful and just enjoy. And so I really enjoy doing that. But I think if my conversation with you, Chris, was so great, it'd be others could benefit from that. So how can we hit the right, uh -huh idea of promoting it without looking like look at me look at me I really mm -hmm. want to say look at this great leader and the insights and the perspectives that she shared in this episode so I haven't quite figured that out but I think going forward I'd like to like to do that I think about the same thing Brad and I think about you know so the the lessons and the inspiration is so great and in the description of the at the episode you know, you do, I know you do the same thing, you know, build up the person and help people understand why they might want to take the time to listen to this. Um, but it does seem a little bit, you know, I will do the same thing. I'll put one post on Twitter, one post on Facebook, you know, and Instagram's not a great interactive because you can't really put the link you know, on an Instagram post. So that's a little tougher. Um, although a lot of people use that platform. So I wish it was a little bit more interactive where they could just click and, and listen if they wanted to. Um, but it, the promotion of it, I think, you know, I still have a lot of people that don't even know that I do it. Awesome. Yeah. Go ahead, Brad. No, I, I, I struggle with that. I yeah. struggle with it and I don't, I don't have a good answer for it because we're not trying to make money from this. Right. We're not, we, we have day jobs. This is a, it's a meaningful hobby. Yeah. And, and also you just feel so proud of the people, you know, their stories. I mean, yes. you know, like what you can gain out of listening to this person. So you really want people to listen because the guests spent the time with you to share and both, you know, in both of our cases, Brad, you know, it's like, it's intimate and personal yep. stuff that they're sharing. And so you want to 
know that they have a good audience and that it's got a broad uh, listening listenership you know, out there yeah. that people are, um, you know, it was worth their time. Yep. And one, one other technical piece, I don't know if Riley has this, but we, we, we don't edit anything for content. The only thing that Carrie has is a software that takes out the ums, like the vocal pauses. And he asked me, should I do that? I go, hell yes, take out the ums. We look, I look better, the, the, the guest sounds better. So anyway, you should get some software. Uh, like yeah, because I edit all the ums out myself and it takes a long time. <laughs> Jerry can hook spent, you up. Uh, yeah. Saturday before last, I spent um, six hours editing an hour 45 portion into, you know, something that was um, cohesive, shorter, and no ums and no dead space. So it does okay. take a long time. I'm, I'm going to have to talk to you about that, Carrie. Yeah. The, uh, the audio editing software we use is called Descript. Um, it actually does a great job normalize normalizing the audio and the levels because there's the interviewer and then the in interviewee and if they're even slightly off you can notice it in the you know finished audio file so that does a great job of normalizing it but it also has um, transcript technology that can recognize all of the words and create a transcript and then from that it goes through and picks out all the ums Unfortunately, what it does do is it deletes every single um. So some of uh, some of the vocal utterances that you'll that you'll use in the course of a course of an interview or or the course of you know the episode are are very natural and you know they they need to be there still or they're connected to a word. So you can't just take it out. Yeah. Uh, and it keeps it flowing. So it's kind of a pick and choose area where it just you go through and take out the ums where maybe it doesn't add anything to the conversation and it makes it a little bit more smoother and polished. Yeah. I think pauses too are good. Yeah. Meaning if we ask a question and the guest thinks about it and it's quiet. Uh, my last guest, Vicki Hurst, the LPGA golfer, she had a couple in there that was lengthy but it felt really natural mm -hmm. and her responses were really thoughtful afterwards. So part of me is not jumping back in to ask another prompt question, right? Mm -hmm. It's part of me feeling comfortable with that, that pause and the, and the guests thinking about the answer. So don't think, don't, don't cut those out, Carrie. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. All right, so uh, I think we can go ahead and move on to our Q and A section. I think I saw a couple questions um, come in. Um, Sally, did you have a list of the questions that were coming through? I asked. I asked two specifically in the chat box. If you want to start with those, and then yeah, we'd we'd like to invite anybody else at this time. If you have any questions for either of our guests, please feel free to leave them in the chat box. But yeah, we can we can start with the ones that um, I put in there just as we were talking through these topics. Um, one was talk. One I asked, how often do each of you go about recording and publishing episodes? Do you have an established schedule? Do you record all like many at one time and then publish at a different time? Or how do you go about that specifically? Brad, you go first. Yeah, so when I first started, I drove Carrie crazy because I said, if I'm going to say I'm a podcast, I'm going to, so I did like one five yeah. <laughs> in about five weeks. And Carrie's like, you know, that's not how typically podcasts work. They usually get dropped at us you know, a certain cadence. And I said, well, okay, with the cadence, I need to get a cup under my belt. But now the cadence is more once once a month, twice a month at the most, probably about once a month because my day job's busy too. Mm -hmm. So about once a month I'm, I'm aiming for, and I'm aiming more for quality versus quantity. So I had a bunch. I had a bunch um, of interviews recorded, and so for me, it was a matter of once I got my open done, it was a matter of kind of um, uh, writing and tracking the intro and the outro to each section, and, and then putting those out. So my first five went out like 
um, about 10 days apart each. I just wanted to get some out there because I feel like for people to even go back and listen to the early ones, right? You, you have to have a few. You don't want to just put one out there and then let people um, uh, say, well, I wish they would put out more than one, right? It's a waste of my time. Um, so I think what you did, Brad, was really smart. And it's kind of the same thing that I tried to do. And now I'm more like, it's been three weeks, four weeks almost since my last one. And I just put one out um, last week. Yep. So uh, sometimes it's longer in between now. Um, but the first five or six, I put out pretty like 10 days apart. Love it. And then the second part of my question was talking about you guys both mentioned that you interview guests. Obviously, that's the, the point of your podcast is having these conversations. And I know you both, it sounded like mentioned microphones. So I'm just wondering how you facilitate with the technology side, a, a conversation. Do you do it through Zoom and send them a microphone? Do you call them up on the phone? How do you, how do you go about recording that audio with a guest if you are not there in person having that conversation? Chris, take the lead on that. I only do it, I do it through Zoom and I just use the Zoom recording audio. Great. And, um, you know, GarageBand is, uh, you know, you can do some things in there to kind of equalize things and, you know, whatever. But I have not ever had a problem except that occasionally if somebody is using um, headphones like you are right now, Sally, if they're knocking a piece of jewelry or against it or moving around mm -hmm. a lot, you'll hear some of that. So when that is happening, I'll ask them to please stop what they're doing. <laughs> you know, like, stop it. Take those headphones out or, you know, whatever, um, if they're able to do that. Because I think that, um, you know, you do get some of that knocking or background noise from headsets sometimes. Um, but I also have had people, I've gone in person with my microphone and just recorded live into the GarageBand platform as well. So that, you know, I did that with Jerry. I did that with Nikki. I've done that with most of them. There are only two that I did on Zoom so far. And it was really because it was pandemic and people didn't feel like coming out. Likewise, Sally, I, we did uh, some Zoom and Carrie did a good job with kind of working on the, the quality of it. But uh, the preferred and I, the, for me are two headphones and a recorder and, um, I typically go to the office or someplace of the guest and just, I have a backpack and I just connect it and we just sit at a quiet place and have the conversation. And um, I'm getting better. There's certain settings that I have to do mm. with that recorder and it makes Carrie's life better. So I think I've gotten better at that. So Carrie doesn't have to do so much editing with the, or the vocality or the whatever that term is. And, uh, but I think the quality is really good. There is some intimacy too about those headphones. Chris, you've lived your whole career with headphones. And, but for me, when I'm sitting across from someone with the headphones and because you just, you see, it seems like you just tune into that person. You're, you're, I don't know. It's, it's a great sensory experience that, that interview process. I don't know if you've sensed that Chris, in various aspects of your career? I don't use headphones when I'm interviewing people. I mean, I, I just, we're just sitting there together and there's one microphone that we're sharing. And so, you know, the proximity is close um, because we're kind of sitting both on like catty corner on a corner of a table or something is how I prefer to do it. Um, but I, I have never used headphones. Because you and I, when we, we was during COVID and we did your interview via Zoom. Yeah, we did. And yeah. in the middle of our interview, my phone rang. So this yeah, is... But, a, <laughs> but we let it go. I, can't, I know, this, but this is authentic. another thing. I'm such a control freak, right? Like I, I want, if I'm on Zoom, I want my light. I want things looking nice, you know, behind me, whatever. If I'm um, doing a podcast, 
I want to control my phone is off the hook. There is a sign right now on my door that says, do not ring or this doorbell or knock because I'm doing a virtual <laughs> interview right now. You know, like there, I mean, I'm, I like to control yeah. my atmosphere. So it's interesting that you go to them more often, Brad, I make them come to me mm -hmm. if it's possible. I mean, I have gone to them, but I like to know what my environment is going to be so yeah. that I can control it um, a little better. And the headphones help with the controlling aspect. Mm -hmm. The headphones and it does mute out or keep some of the ambient noise out. Yeah. Where on a Zoom call, no. I had leaf blowers going when I was doing <laughs> Zoom calls. <laughs> that wasn't great. Yeah. But right. <laughs> Any other questions, Sally? I want to circle back to one thing that, Brad, you mentioned in the very beginning. You talked a little bit about metrics and how, um, and I'm, so I'm curious if we could go back to that topic and if you guys could talk to us a little bit about, I know, Brad, you talked about it's not really important for the numbers. You're really more, you know, focused on the, the meaning that people take out of the conversation yep. and what they get out of it. Um, but I am curious if, if ever you do look at, you know, the downloads or the listens, and that might help you dedicate, you know, or determine future topics or guests, or are you saying basically by that answer that they aren't important because you're not after the numbers? I guess I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that specifically. Yeah, not after the numbers to elevate my profile or to make money or to, you know, look at the agency. I'm not. That's not the purpose. The purpose, and the only reason I'm thinking about elevating the promoting aspect is because what Chris has said is that what people are sharing in these podcasts are so powerful. Mm -hmm. So it's great to be a humble, take kind of a take a humble servant leader approach, which is great. But if you want, if we want to help people broaden perspective and and listen to some of these things, <clears throat> I have to be more thoughtful on how to how to do that. I know Carrie knows downloads and stuff like that is, but I, I never asked them, well, you know, how did this episode or that, I, that's irrelevant to me. It's really just the meaningfulness, but I have to, I think in 2022, I want to think about that more thoughtfully as another way to shine a light on a broader, in a broader way on the guest. So I, that's, I think I will have to start paying attention to that in some in some format. Right. And and also you want it, people to feel like it's worth their while, right? Yeah, to, good point. To be with you. Yeah. Um, so it you really have to kind of get over that humility thing, you know, and and try to figure it out. I have not done a good job of that either, Brad. And and that's something that I would really like to do too. I think once, you know, somebody discovers one. Obviously, if they look you up or they get it on a platform, they're going to see that there are 17 others there that they can listen to, right? So, and once they follow you, every time you have a new one, Brad, it pops up in my queue. So I'm, you know, it just automatically starts playing, which is great. So you just want to, you know, kind of get that word out and have people follow you. I ask at the end of every podcast, you know, please share it with someone if you think that they would be inspired by it. Yeah. And, um, you know, to uh, follow if they were inspired by it so that they, you know, they know when the next person's story comes up because I'm just blown away by, you know, these people and what they've gone through and their positive attitudes and, you know, how they have landed so positively after something so tragic. And it, it's, I want other people to hear it. Yeah. Awesome. Do we have uh, do we have any more questions from the audience? I do see something in the chat from Amy about um, transcription, and I know there are some different things that you can use to transcribe. Um, I use a service called Otter, um, O T T E R. Dot, I think online it's Otter AI, and you can play anything, and it will transcribe it. It's it's pretty accurate and does a, a really good job. And if you have more than one speaker, it can distinguish the speakers for you when you're in there. So I use that for a lot of my video and audio um, transcriptions. I think there's, you know, there's a, a free Otter and then there's one you can pay for that's a little bit better. And it's not expensive. 
Okay. Awesome. I'd, uh, I don't really have a question. I'd like to just throw out how much uh, I appreciate both of you taking the time to go through this. It's very insightful. And I think uh, it's why you both have had so much success in peeling back the layers. I think it's the key to these is that there are people that can jump on. I've listened because <clears throat> I'm so ADD. I can't read. I have to have somebody read to me. So, um, you know, podcasts to me are, are so meaningful and I've kind of developed my A-list of stuff and the two of you really capture that and it's so amazing that you're right in our backyard. Uh, the stories are inspirational, they're insightful. Um, and uh, I think, again, the layer is the key. I don't know if anybody, any other takeaway from anybody else watching it is that people can just ask questions, but both of you have this kind of intuitive knack of like opening up the can a little bit more and what you get out of that is is pretty incredible so just wanted to gush a bit about how appreciative i am of what you both do so thanks yeah thank thanks you, Steve. Steve. Yeah. and i will say i i did it for a lot of years professionally but brad just impresses me every time i listen to one of his yeah. because his, I mean, that hasn't been his career and he it really is masterful at it. And I appreciate that so much too. Yeah, thank you, Chris. All right, well, if there are no further questions, um, <clears throat> the last piece of this, I was, I don't mean to steal from you, Chris, but little nuggets of wisdom, if you guys have any more. Um, there it's, you know, a major lesson learned that you wish you could have known previously or, you know, something that you're learning now. You should have said it this beforehand so she could have yeah. thought about it. <laughs> both, of, both of us. I am grateful sometimes that I do take the time to edit through my conversations because a lot of times... When people are, I mean, I literally have come to tears myself when people have been talking to me about their stories and I've been so moved or so inspired that, you know, I, there's a lot of dead space there, you know, and just um, so, and people don't know what that dead space is. So clearly I'm editing it out, you know, in the conversation. Um, but uh, I, so I, I am grateful that I do that. Um, and I will just say, one of my biggest hangups has been, I want it to be perfect. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And that's my biggest takeaway and my biggest lesson for myself is, you can have a great conversation with somebody that is not perfect and people can really enjoy it and learn something about it. I'm always gonna be my own worst critic. We all are always going to be our own worst critics when it comes to listening to ourselves or watching ourselves on TV. Um, so just try to let that go, try to ease up on yourself a little bit and understand that you know it, this is still meaningful even when it's not perfect. A little bit perfection um, aspect too, Chris, for me, it's um, don't play it safe. That's even beyond podcasts. I think for me, mo a good part of my life had been very thought out and planned and, uh, you know, at time maybe missed some things in life because it just either was afraid of making a mistake or afraid of make of the risk. And uh, I oftentimes tell our two daughters, just go for it. Because yeah. there were times I held back and I so I think I missed opportunities because I was afraid of failing, which is a perfectionist thing, afraid of failing. So in podcasting, I think I'm starting to become in the moment with the guest going for it a little bit more. Not, sh not so sure where it's going to turn out. A little bit like Chris, you're more comfortable with that. And there's been some really nice nuggets that have happened when I've gone I've just been in the moment and genuine and asked a question that maybe I wouldn't have because I was afraid it would go somewhere it didn't need to. So um, just go for it. I'm, I'm going for it more. How about that? <laughs>
That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you both for joining. Before we sign off here, a couple announcements to get through. Um, upcoming for AAF Toledo, the October Coffee with Creatives is Trick or Treat Photography Tricks with Eric Higley and Rob Lorenzo, um, two exciting Toledo photographers. So be sure to join us on that. That is on October 14th at 9.30 in the morning. Um, our October Lunch and Learn will feature how to prepare an amazing Addy Awards application, which goes <laughs> different processes of submitting an application for the Addies Award, which is hosted in February or March. And then moving on to November, our Coffee with Creatives is Best Marketing Fails. And that will be quite quite an exciting one. So we'll learn from um, the fails that we've seen in the marketing world and kind of take away and how they move forward from that. Chris and I can be the backup in case that speaker drops out <laughs> okay um, <laughs> awesome well thank you both for joining us um i appreciate all of the insights and great conversation you gave to us um i'm going to post the uh links here for both of your web pages chris peterson and brad your podcast website so um thanks again to both of you and uh talk soon thank you thanks appreciate it thank, thank you, you both. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye, friends.